Hello, I'm Brother Boy from the Israel of God, coming to you again, teaching the Word of God by subject and title. Today's title is The Spirit That Gives Life. What is it? The Spirit That Gives Life. What is it? We're going to look at something, sisters and brothers, and because the Word of God is practical and it makes sense. Now, we're going to go to Luke, the 23rd chapter. This is when Jesus was on the cross. Just prior to his death, we're going to see what he said and what happened. Luke chapter 23, and we're going to read one verse, verse 46, 23 and 46. Okay, read it. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Uh -huh. and, having, and having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now, Jesus had already hollered, Lord, you forsaken me, but then he cried again. With a loud voice, and then he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Then he simply died. That's what he means he gave up the ghost. So when this, what he called the ghost, left him, or the spirit left him, he died. Mm -hmm. So it's obvious that you cannot live without this spirit. Now let's go into another situation. Let's back up to Luke, the 8th chapter. Luke, chapter 8. And we're going to start reading at verse 41. Luke 8 and 41. Because we saw this, he gave up the ghost and he died. So we're going to see what is necessary to make him alive. Or anybody. Verse 41, go ahead. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. Now you got this guy, he was a top ruler, religious ruler, because that's all the Romans would let Israel rule. But go ahead and read. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, uh -huh. and she lay a dying. Uh -huh. But as he went, the people thronged him. Now, as Jesus went, the people was all around him, so he couldn't move. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, the girl died. Skip down to verse 49. Verse 49, and go ahead. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, uh -huh. saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Go ahead. Trouble not the master. So he said, Don't, don't bother, master. The girl and died. Go ahead and read. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. Now he said, Just believe, and she's going to be made whole. But keep reading right on through. Go ahead. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, uh -huh. and the father and the mother of the maiden. Go ahead. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not. She is not dead, but sleeping. He said, She's not dead, but sleeping. Look what the people did. Go ahead and read. And they laughed him to scorn, uh -huh. knowing that she was dead. Go ahead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. So Jesus put all them non-believers out of there, mm -hmm. and he called, took the girl by the hand and said, Maid, alive. Maid, he said to her, arise. Mm -hmm. And let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. And her spirit came again. And her spirit came again. And she arose straightway. And she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. And he commanded to give her meat. Look, sisters and brothers, Jesus gave up this spirit, and he died. And this, and this woman, uh, uh, the spirit came back to this woman, and she was dead, and she lived. So we need to know what it is that mobilizes or uh, immobilizes a person. Because this is very important. But the whole thing about it is it is so simple. So let's go see what the spirit is. That can, if without it you're dead, and with it you are alive. Let's go into Job, the 27th chapter. Job, chapter 27. See, the word of God is simple, and you can see it in operation. You don't have to say, well, you know, the Lord works in a mysterious way. That's only if you don't read the book. If you read the book, he declares everything that he is going to do to his servant. In fact, he said, surely he would do nothing but reveal his secrets to his prophets. So if he keep operating in mysterious ways to you, maybe you need to do some reading. Mm -hmm. Job 27 and 1. Go ahead and read. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, uh -huh. As God liveth, who have taken away my judgment, Go ahead. and the Almighty, who has vexed my soul. Go ahead. All the while my breath is in me. All the while my breath is in me. Go ahead. And the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. And the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Go ahead. My lips shall not speak wickedness, uh -huh. nor my tongue utter deceit. He said, now look, as long as the Spirit of God is in me, uh, the, my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, I ain't going to say nothing stupid against God. So let's find out 
what it is that was in Job's nostril that kept him going. Let's go into Genesis, the second chapter. And we're going to read one verse, verse 7. This is how you find out about stuff, and it's so simple, it just makes sense. Verse 7, go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, go ahead. and man became a living soul. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In other words, sister and brother, before he breathed into he was a dead soul. Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord formed when he was a dead soul. So now, what left Jesus' nostrils and left him dead? The breath, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. And what came back to the girl that immobilized her and raised her from the dead? The breath, sister and brother. Now, you can prove that. Go to the graveyard and look at, I mean, go to the funeral home and look at all the dead people in there. I bet you will not find one that is breathing. Or you just look around you, around people that's walking around you and talking. I bet you will not find one that is not breathing. That's how simple and direct the word of God is. It needs no interpretation. All you got to do is read it. Now, let's go into Job chapter 33 and look at something here. Job 33 and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Job 33 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Go ahead. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My tongue hath spoken in my mouth. Uh -huh. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. Go ahead. The Spirit of God hath made me. The Spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of, of the Almighty hath given me life. And the breath... Of the Almighty have given me life. Isn't this what we just got through reading over there? The breath of the Almighty have given me life. What? When the Lord dug man out of the dust of the ground, what did he have to do to mobilize him? He had to breathe into his nostrils. The breath of life. And this is the same thing. The breath of the Almighty have given me life. And without that, sisters and brothers, you are dead. Now let's go into Revelation 11 chapter and look at something. Revelation chapter 11. Because we need to really understand the simplicity of Christ. All you got to do is look at it. So I tell people all the time, well, you know, uh, well, you know it's the, 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 the Spirit is something else. I'm going to tell you something. The Spirit of God comes in many forms, sister and brother. But right now, we're talking about the Spirit that gives you life, the one that's going to mobilize you. And every time, not every other time, Every time somebody cut it off, something died. Every time. Revelation 11 and verse 3. Go ahead. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. See, look, the Lord is going to have a time when he's going to let these, this world be in the hand of a false prophet for three and a half years, sisters and brother. The time of great tribulation. And this guy is going to be doing great miracles. But in the meantime, he's going to have two prophets there to make sure everything is stabilized. And they're going to be working miracles also during that time. But eventually, the Lord is going to turn it over. But keep reading. Go ahead. These are the two olive trees uh -huh. and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Go ahead. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoured their, their enemies. Uh -huh. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this same, in this manner be killed. Now these guys are going to have power. You got people running around talking about this is Moses and Elijah or either Moses and Enoch. And this is neither one of them. Mm -hmm. These guys are born. Moses and Elijah will not be raised from the dead before the first resurrection, and Enoch have never died, and the Lord ain't going to let him run around and get killed in the, la right. in the last day. But go ahead and read. <laughs> These have power to shut heaven, uh -huh. that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, go ahead. and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. See, because they're using some of the plagues that Moses is using, and some of the stuff that Elijah did, they think that is them. It is not. The power is the Lord. He can give it to anybody in any generation. Mm -hmm. These guys can stop rain. They can cause all kind of havoc on this earth. 
that they're going to do it for three and a half years. And when it's up, something's going to happen to them. Go ahead and read. And when they shall have finished their testimony, uh -huh. the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit Go ahead. shall make war against them uh -huh. and shall overcome them and kill them. Go ahead. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, uh -huh. where also our Lord was crucified. So now, when that ministry is up, he's going to allow this beast and false prophet, this religious man and his temporal leader of the European Economic Community, to kill these guys. And they will not suffer these guys to be buried. They're going to lay their bodies in the streets, and they're going to rejoice, and they're going to be sending gifts all over because they are happy that the Lord have, uh, that they have killed these. And that's Jerusalem, sisters and brothers, because at that time, it's just like now. It's still like Sodom and Egypt. Mm -hmm. Everything goes on. The land ain't holy no more. Not now. But what's going to happen while they're rejoicing? Skip down to verse 11. Verse 11, and go ahead. And after three days and in half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So after three and a half days, the spirit of God. In other words, the Lord sent his breath back in them, starting to breathe again. And they got up, and all of a sudden, everybody was scared. That's simply, that's all that happened, sisters and brothers. Like they got gotten people that, uh, that have... That have a heart attacks, either get drowned or some kind of way, they ain't breathing no more, and they hit them with this with the electric shock. They <sighs> okay, they're all right now. I either do mouth to mouth resuscitation to get them to breathing again. Once they start breathing, they're all right. Same thing, the Lord sent his breath back, and he's all right. And but when the Lord want to take kill you, he take this breath away from you. Let's go and give you a perfect example. Let's go into Genesis, the sixth chapter. But see, this don't make sense, sisters and brothers. You know, this straight talk, because it's not spookery. People like to be taught spookery. Oh, some uh, 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 ghost that you can't see, some kind of entity that's going to come in the room and go. The Lord don't deal like that. If he does like that, then we don't need no book. We don't need to study nothing. Let it take us over, and he direct it what we're supposed to do. He don't operate that way, sisters and brothers. And we want you to understand that he don't operate that way. Now we go in Genesis, the sixth chapter. This is here when the Lord has got tired of this man. So he said, I'm going to kill every one of them. We're going to start it at verse 13. Six and verse 13. Go ahead. And God said unto Noah, uh -huh. the end of all. That's right. Let's back, let's, let's back up a little bit because we want to look at some, uh, 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 let's back up to 12. Because this is the earth is getting just about to have gotten here already again. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Go ahead. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Uh -huh. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And that's about where we are now. Everything is wrong. You understand? If you say a woman can't deal with a woman, you are condemned. Man can't lay with a man, you are condemned. Everything is upside down. The Lord gave you the first day, the seventh day for the Sabbath. You got preachers running around say the first day. And the ones that try to think they're smarter than every day say every day is the Sabbath. And every, you, he said, you fool what you can't eat, now you can eat anything, just pray over it. Man has gotten here again where all the earth is corrupt with him. Go ahead and read. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. Go ahead. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. He said, I'm going to destroy all of them. Keep reading. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with the pitch. Uh -huh. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. Go ahead. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, uh -huh. and the height of it 30 cubits. Go ahead. A window shall thou make to the ark, and in the... In, in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. Go ahead. And the door of the ark thou shalt set in the side thereof with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. He said, I'm going to make it, and I'm, I'm telling you how to make it, because this is what I'm going to do. Go ahead and read. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. He said, I bring a flood of water upon the earth. Go ahead and read. To destroy all flesh, uh -huh. wherein is in the breath of life. To destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. Life. Go ahead. From under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now, the Lord know how to kill the whole creation because he drowned everything. 
That's why he did it the first time. It wasn't like to get the so-called scientists running around with their speculation, tell me you had a, a, a barrage of shower of meteorites, and they hit the ground and knocked up the dust, and the dust blocked out the sun, and the dinosaurs froze to death. I asked the question, you said we was there. How come we didn't freeze to death? But he drowned everything, and whose nostrils was the breath of life. Let's go into Genesis, the seventh chapter, and verse 20. Start at verse 20. Go ahead. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, uh -huh. and the mountains were covered. Go ahead. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, uh -huh. both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. Every man. Uh -huh. All in whose nostrils was the, was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. So he killed everything, man and beast, all in whose nostrils was the breath of life. You can prove that this can't happen. All you got to do is get your animal or person and take them to some water and hold them down long enough. And they will drown. And when you pull them out their water, sisters and brothers, they will not be breathing. That is an absolute fact. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Because the word of God is, an, is absolute within itself, sisters and brothers. Everything proved. The word of God is proven all the time. That's why I always look at these people, always talking about a uh, uh, debate between scientists and theologians. There is no debate if the theologian is not a theologian and he's a man of God that deals with the word of God, there ain't nothing to debate. He's going to read this book on you, and it's going to be over with. It is all that simple. Because you're going to tell me that the word of God is conjecture, can't be proven. You can prove it all the time. This you can prove. The Lord said you have to breathe and live. All you got to do is stop to breathe, and you'll die. Then the Lord said, if you stop breathing, you'll die. That's absolute proof here. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 18. This is the Lord will put something on your mind here, sister and brother. This man ain't all he think he is. Go ahead and read. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, uh -huh. that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Now, this is what we don't understand. We just like the beasts. Go ahead and read. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Uh -huh. Even one thing befalleth them. Go ahead. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Go ahead. There, they have all one breath, uh -huh. so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. So we had one, all one breath. The air that I breathe come out of my nose, then the, the pig... Breathe it. Mm -hmm. Come out his nose, then the dog breathe it. Come out his nose, then the next person breathe it. Mm -hmm. Say, oh, I don't have no preeminence. Go ahead and read. All go into one place. All go to one place. All of the dust. All of the dust. And all turn to dust again. Yes, go ahead. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? Uh -huh. And the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? He asked the question, who knoweth whether the spirit of man go up or the spirit of the beast that go down to the earth? Who knoweth? You ain't seen it? Go ahead and read. Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works. Uh -huh. For that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? Now, how many persons have come back and you have shown them what's, after, what's come after? <laughs> Sisters and brothers, nobody. So this is just like man like the beast. We all come out the dirt, we die, we go to the beast. But all the time we live and we breathe air. I breathe air, the beast breathe air. So he said, we'll all go to one place. Mm -hmm. Now let's go into Job, the 34th chapter. Job chapter 34. Because, sisters and brothers, this is simple here. But people don't like simplicity. You like to be in darkness so you can have room to debate and look like you're smart. You're not smart. All these preachers getting on and lying on the word of God, you're not smart. Because the lake of fire is there and forever is a long time. Job 34, and we're going to start reading at verse 12. Job 34, and we're going to start reading at verse 12. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, surely God will not do wickedly. Uh -huh. Neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. He won't. Keep reading. Who have given him a charge over the earth. Who have given him a charge over the earth. Go ahead. Or who have disposed the whole world. Uh -huh. If he set his heart upon man. If he gathered unto himself his spirit and his breath. If he set his heart upon man. And he gathered unto himself his spirit and his breath. And his breath. Go ahead. 
All flesh shall perish together. All flesh shall perish together. And man shall turn again into dust. And you're going to go back to the dirt that you came out of, sisters and brothers. It's all that simple. And one simple ingredient that the Lord is going to take for you, from you to send you there. The breath that you breathe. Mm -hmm. Ain't that, that is too simple. How can you mess that up? Let's go to the 104th chapter of Psalm. You cannot mess the word of God up. Only way for you to mess the word of God up is to take it off the table. Because if you read it, and you read long enough, you're going to run into the same thing. This is the same Bible you have. Unless you've got one of them new NIV Bibles, which was designed to distort the word of God. Psalm 104. And we're going to start at verse, at verse 23. Psalm 104 and verse 23. Okay, go ahead. Man goeth forth unto his work uh -huh. and to his labor unto the evening. Go ahead. O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So the Lord has done that. And the earth is full of thy riches. Man go forth in his works. Skip down to verse 28 and go ahead. That thou givest them, they gather. Whatever the Lord give us and the beasts and everything else, that's what we gather. Go ahead and read. Thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. Because the Lord's feeding us all. Go ahead. Thou hidest thy face, uh -huh. they are troubled. You hide your face and we are troubled. Thou takest away their breath. You take away their breath. They die. They and, die. And return to their dust. Look, sisters and brothers, it is all that simple. You got one ingredient, the same ingredients that God gave you when he dug you out of the ground, which is the breath of life, is the same ingredient that maintains you. And if somebody take it, you will die just like Jesus did on the cross. That is so simple. So simple, sisters and brothers. Let's go into the book of James. And we're going to look at this because the Lord has made this so simple and so clear that nobody can circumvent it. I mean, nobody. Because here, sisters and brothers, James is telling people about works and they, uh, uh, about their works and what they're supposed to do. But this is so simple. In fact, nobody wants to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we're going to read a little bit, sisters and brothers, before we get out and finish this. We're going to start this at 2, James 2. And let's start reading it, uh, 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 let's see, verse 14, mm -hmm. 2 and 14, go ahead. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, uh -huh. can faith save him? Go ahead. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Uh -huh. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. Uh -huh. What doth it profit? And don't profit them nothing. Go ahead and read. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead being alone. So people tell me I have faith and I don't have no works, but you don't, they don't do no works. So if you don't have it, it is dead being alone. Now, Lord, uh, 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 compare that to an absolute. Mm -hmm. To make sure you understand that works without faith, a, a, a faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. He compared it to an absolute. And let's see what this absolute is. Skip down to verse 26 and read it. Go ahead. For as the body without the spirit is dead. For as the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without works is dead also. So faith without works is dead also. The body without the spirit. What spirit? The spirit in Job, the Job that was in his nostril. What is that? The spirit of life, sisters and brothers. If you're not breathing, you are dead. That's simple, ain't it? And if you are breathing, you are alive. Mm -hmm. That's so simple. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. This is what people don't want to deal with. Don't want to deal with simplicity. I can't deal with simplicity. You see, we are intellectual. You ain't no intellectual. You are blind. And the Lord said in Revelation, you need to get you some eyesight and not your eyes because you are blind. Because you can't see this simple word of God. Ecclesiastes 12 chapter, and we're going to start at verse 1. Ecclesiastes 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, read it. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, uh -huh. while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh. The Lord is telling you now, remember him in the days of your youth. 
while the evil day is drawing nigh. Don't wait till you get all old and you can't do nothing. I want you to serve me now. Go ahead and read. When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So now, all of a sudden, you get people that get old that can't do nothing else. So I'm going to serve the Lord now. Maybe the Lord ain't going to let you serve mm -hmm. when you ain't got no pleasure. Get down to verse 5 and go ahead. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, uh -huh. and fear shall be in the way, Go ahead. and the almond tree shall flourish, Go ahead. and the grasshopper shall be a burden, uh -huh. and desire shall fail, Go ahead. because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. So it's just Solomon have an elaborate way of saying you got old, mm -hmm. and everything is hard, everything is hurt you, and all your desire is gone, mm -hmm. and eventually you go. Mm -hmm. And that's when the mourners go about the streets. Mm -hmm. That's once you dead. People are mourning over you. And what happened when you go to the grave? Skip down to verse 7 and read it. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it, sisters and brothers. What spirit? Let's look at it one more time. Go back to Genesis the second chapter, and read the seventh verse. One more time, because I want to put this back to back. The dust go back to the ground, and the spirit go back to God who gave it. What is this come out of the ground? Read it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. So when that breath of life, which is the spirit of life, go back to God, the body go back to the ground. You are dead, sisters and brothers. That is so simple. Thank you for your time. The Israel of God has three excellent books. An overview of the Feast of the Lord. Man has his holidays and God has his holy days. What is the purpose of man's holidays and what are their origins? God's holy days are his plan for the salvation of man. For your copy, contact the Israel of God to get an overview of God's plan for man's salvation outlined in his feast days. The Four Winds of Heaven is a reference book. It includes unfulfilled prophecies and their dire consequences for the near future of the earth and all its inhabitants. In this book, the prophecies of the Bible from Babylon to Armageddon are carefully documented and explained with historical names, dates, color illustrations, and an analysis of the rapture, saved, and born again. Dietary Law To find out the foods God intended for man's consumption, we've all heard the saying, you are what you eat. If that's the case, we're all full of unclean and unhealthy things. We've been taught that we can eat anything we want as long as we pray over it or give thanks to God for it. If that's the case, then why did God give us a dietary law in the Bible and make this statement? To make a difference between the clean and the unclean, that which should be eaten and should not be eaten. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log into our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us in our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you.